Ready for its speedy flight to Mexico City, the big silver airliner is brought onto the field. At certain intervals, day and night, Pan American weathermen at all stations over the vast system report all details of weather and flying conditions in their areas. High altitude records are taken of the upper air by releasing a hydrogen filled balloon, and its course through the sky is followed by the sharp lenses of the theodolite. Mail, express, and baggage loaded, the passengers board the waiting clipper. The fabled lands below the Rio Grande, once days away, are now but a few hours away. The speed and comforts of these super liners of the air mark a new era in transportation, the magic carpet of modern travel. As our silver clipper grippily leaves the ground, we are off for old Mexico. Our first welcome is a colorful parade up the Avenida Matero. It is Mexico's biggest procession of the year. The beautiful red, green, and white flag of Mexico and many colored standards of all the Americas pass in review. Followed by native charros, or horsemen in bright costumes, riding their thoroughbred horses. The National Theater is Mexico's most beautiful modern building, having cost $15 million. is the National Palace, built in the 17th century. Here are the government offices as well as the presidential offices and state apartments. Across the square is Mexico's great cathedral. It is the largest church building on the American continent. According to tradition, it is built upon the foundations of an Aztec temple whose ancient blood-stained idols are still buried inside its walls. In the city's oldest park, the Alameda, the most striking feature is the superb monument to Mexico's patriot president, Benito Juarez. Putting the marble shaft is the golden figure of winged victory greeting the day of freedom. On Sundays in Chapultepec Park, the National Tipica Orchestra is a delightful feature. <laughs> to the strains of their native music, these colorful artists dance the Jarabe, Mexico's national dance. A Sunday treat is watching the colorful costumes of those riding through the park's many bridal paths. Another Sunday attraction is beautiful Xochimilco meaning where flowers grow. Fantastic, incredible are the floating gardens of Xochimilco. Aztecs began them by growing flowers and fruits on rafts of woven reed. Today they are a series of flower-lined canals.
Picturesque flat-bottomed boats resembling Venetian gondolas are pulled by Indians. Native musicians sing and play songs of old Mexico. Indian flower sellers dart here and there in their little canoe. With its vivid, colorful life, Xochimilco is one of old Mexico's loveliest spots. Twenty-eight miles from Mexico City are the great pyramids of the sun and moon, once the center of a prehistoric Aztec city. Most of the designs represent the Aztec god, the feathered serpent, their conception of a rattlesnake with the feathers of the Quetzal bird. Like the Sphinx and the pyramids of Egypt, these ancient temples have withstood the centuries, a lasting stone-carved record of a great civilization. At Villa de Guadalupe, a suburb of Mexico City, is the Church of Guadalupe, the most sacred shrine in Mexico. On the 12th of December every year, fully 100,000 Indian pilgrims come from all parts of Mexico to worship at the shrine of the Virgin of Guadalupe. During the great festival, the plaza outside the church resembles a great country fair. According to legends, the church occupies the site of an Aztec temple dedicated to the goddess of earth and corn. Beautiful and interesting trips out of Mexico City is along the great scenic highway to Cuernavaca, a place of roses and romance. Here, one of the most beautiful Spanish churches, although now in ruins, still retains the architectural splendor of its Franciscan designers and builders. Near the cathedral are the delightful Borda Gardens, laid out in 1716 by Jose de la Borda, the French silver king, who beautified them with terraces, arcades, pergolas, and artificial lakes, a million peso fantasy of two centuries ago. Fifty miles beyond Cuernavaca, in the heart of Mexico's rich hills of gold and silver is the picturesque town of Tasco. Towering above everything in the city are the massive spires and great dome of its famous cathedral. So famous is Tasco's beauty that it is a mecca for hundreds of artists who reproduce its loveliness on canvas. Everywhere one looks in Tasco, there is an exquisite picture. The ancient town with its cobble-paved streets white houses and red tile roofs, possesses a quaintness all its own. Here lived the great boar at one time, controlled the fabulous supply of gold and silver which was dug from the hills about the town. The native women of Tasco adhere to the primitive, still doing their family washing in the laundry. Probably nowhere else can one find such true, genuine types of old Mexico as here in Tasco.
Going down to Mexico's west coast, we come to the age-old port of Acapulco. Sailing vessels still reign supreme in this Pacific port. Here the groundswell of the Pacific breaks upon the mountainous rocky shore of Mexico's coastline. A scenic lookout has been constructed so that the visitor may admire the spectacular vista of the great foamy surf smashing upon the jagged rocky coast. Native boys dive from these precipitous cliffs into the surging sea below. Try it sometime. It's great for your nerves. All in all, Acapulco is one of the wonder spots of scenic Mexico. Undoubtedly one of the most charming of all Mexico's towns is the picturesque city of Morelia. The approach to the city is made along the ancient arched aqueduct built by the Spaniards centuries ago to provide the city with its water supply. Strange to say, it still serves that purpose today. In the center of the old city of Morelia is a beautiful Tarascan fountain, a touch of modern art in this age-old city. Every old Mexican city boasts of its church, yet here in Morelia, we find one of the finest examples of Spanish colonial architecture. It is the only Mexican cathedral to have been made facing north. A statue of Morelos, immortal hero of Mexico, dominates the main plaza. Browsing around the old streets of the city, one is fascinated with the lovely old world architecture and atmosphere of this colonial Spanish town. Morella's home is now a museum. A few doors up the street is San Nicolas University, one of the oldest universities on the American continent. Nowhere in Mexico is there such a wealth of century-old buildings and atmosphere as here in the beautiful town of Morelia.
local Indians have been making clay utensils for centuries. Housewives and servants, as well as treasure-seeking tourists, come here to buy kitchen utensils, bowls, ollas, flower pots, and other pottery ware. One of the most beautiful lakes in all the Americas, rivaling the famed scenic lakes of Switzerland and Italy, is Lake Pazquaro. More than a mile high, it typifies the scenic beauty of the state of Michoacan. Along the shores and little islands of the lake are strange Tarascan villages where live the Indian fishermen who make their living catching whitefish for which Pazquaro is famous. masters of pastoral paintings would have found this lake region abounding in fitting subjects for their canvases. Words are inadequate to describe the beauty of this scenic wonderland. An Indian shepherd boy stops long enough to give us a shy smile. A lovely type of natives, these Tarascans. The native Indians of Pazquaro travel from town to town in this lake country. On Sundays, they come into the ancient and much-loved town of Urwapan. It is a fascinating place in a lovely country and has a delightful climate. Urwapan is famous for its beautiful lacquer ware. Unknown is the origin of the Tarascan art of making this decorative carved work. The brilliantly colored lacquers are ground by hand in this primitive method. Designs are cut into the wood, colors are inlaid, and the whole is carefully polished. Similar in technique to the Chinese, it has an oriental aspect, yet it has never been determined where the Tarascans learned this wonderful art. It has been passed down to them through the ages, its origin lost in the remote centuries of the past. Market over, the Indians return to their little island villages in their large picturesque canoes, each dug out of the huge trunk of a single tree. Near Uruapan is the Singing River, so-called because of its murmuring waters and numerous cascades. Along its banks, beautiful oaks, palms, mangoes, pines, and other trees of the tropical and temperate zones are strangely intermingled. 
In the shade grow flowers of every variety. Especially famous are the lovely hydrangeas, which bloom in profusion the year round. The natives make good use of the clear mountain streams. Here, the women folk bring their family wash, and their love for talk and gossip makes this natural community laundry a real delight. At the end of the day, the picturesque Tarascans make their way homeward. Indeed, this is a lovely place to know. We are overjoyed that the itinerary of our air crews included this fascinating and beautiful lake country. Again, we start out from Mexico City, this time to far off Yucatan, to explore the wonderful ruins at Chichen Itza, which have aroused worldwide interest. Although almost inaccessible a few years ago, they can now be speedily and comfortably reached in a few hours from Mexico City by Pan American Flying Clipper Ship. Speeding over the vast terrain of Mexico at about 200 miles an hour, we cannot help but marvel at the wonders which these flying clipper ships have brought to Mexico and the world. Now weeks have been cut into days, days into hours. Distance exists no longer. Such is the magic of the airways. In a few hours, our silver wings bring us to the city of Merida, capital of Yucatan, and one of the quaintest cities in all Mexico. Here, too, in the archways and architecture of Merida, we find the touch of colonial Spain. Instead of street signs, old Merida quaintly used statues or pictures. For instance, this is Elephant Street. And here is Tiger Street. Like all Mexican cities, the cathedral dominates the main plaza of the town. Here in Merida is one of the finest in all Mexico. The office of Pan American Airways adds a modern touch to the otherwise age-old city. Horses and carriages are the general means of local transportation. A visit to Merida's marketplace is a never-to-be-forgotten treat. A riot of color in people, pottery, vegetables, fruit, and flowers. Not far from Merida are the great Mayan ruins of Chichen Itza. At the time of the fall of the Roman Empire, the Mayans discovered Yucatan, and here started the temples and pyramids of America's most holy native city. According to tradition, Chichen Itza was a sacred city in ancient times, to which thousands of pilgrims came from all parts of Mexico and Central America. 
When the Spaniards arrived in the 1500s, they found the place deserted and in ruins. In size and construction, the temples and palaces of Chichen Itza rival those of ancient Egypt and India. Erected many ages before the Christian era, this was the capital of the early Mayas, an empire which has since been lost in the passing of the centuries. Among the outstanding ruins is the great temple of Kukul Khan, the feathered serpent, patron deity of the city. The majestic pyramid, surmounted by an imposing temple, rises in nine receding terraces to a height of a hundred feet. At the temple on top, the most holy place in the city, the ceremonies began for the incensing of the human sacrificial victims. Native Mayan women of today still dress in the white embroidered costumes of their ancestors. To the left of the pyramid is the great temple of the warriors and the group of a thousand columns, a vast architectural complex enclosing a central plaza containing more than five acres and composed of pyramids, temples, colonnaded halls, sunken courts, terraces, and platforms. Over the stone in the foreground, young warriors were laid and their hearts cut out by the high priest. Throughout the ruins are statues of priests and warriors and the feathered serpent, a strange reminder of a past civilization. Perhaps in the years to come, scientists and archaeologists will learn the whole story and history of Chichen Itza. Having gazed with awe upon these almost unbelievable ruins of thousands of years ago, we could equally well be impressed with the 20th century wonders of today, as represented by our Pan American Skyliner. In a few short hours, it has brought us to the valleys and lakes of Mexico, to the great capital, Mexico City, to Xochimilco, to the ancient city of Chichen Itza. Over these same routes, the great fleet of flying clipper ships speeds mail, commerce, and passengers to the 20 republics of the Americas, across two oceans to Europe and Africa. This is America's merchant marine of the air, America's lifeline to four continents. Today, this swift, dependable transportation is hard at work 24 hours a day at the command of our military services. Men, ships, facilities everywhere are contributing their aid towards our nation's victory. Wherever war has struck, these Pan-American men and ships are carrying on. Pan-American, likewise, will have an important role in the peace to come, in the task of building a better world to live in. Here, too, Air transport will make a very real contribution to the future welfare of the United States and to all nations.